The story behind the scar is chilling, and it all began with an inmate and a cell phone. I've been kicked, I've been knocked out, I had knife pulled on me because of cell phones. Captain Robert Johnson is a former correctional officer at a South Carolina state prison. The inmates don't want to give up those cell phones because they're like candy and they are very, very valuable to them. So valuable, they would murder someone who tries to take them away. Something Captain Johnson experienced firsthand. He says an inmate paid a man $6,000 using an illegal cell phone to go to Johnson's house and kill him. This guy stood over me after I fell and continued to shoot. This happened nearly a decade ago, but the problem of cell phones in prison keeps growing. The proof is in these pictures. Cell phones, drugs, money, contraband found by correctional officers in South Carolina prisons. A problem so apparent that last month, Governor McMaster declared cell phones in prisons a state emergency and signed an executive order to help solve it. The reason for prison is a punishment, but it's also for public safety, and that's one aspect of public safety that we cannot guarantee because of these cell phones. Brian Sterling, the director of the South Carolina Department of Corrections, says cell phones in state prisons are a problem, not only in South Carolina, but across the nation. They are physically incarcerated, but virtually they can continue doing what they were doing on the street from behind bars. Sterling says the Department of Corrections spends millions of taxpayer dollars trying to keep phones out of the prison, but it's getting expensive and the inmates are discovering new ways to get them in. They can bribe staff, um, they can put them on food trucks, you name it. If there's a way to get it in, they will get cell phones in. They say electronic blocking is the best solution. Blocking or jamming prevents a cell phone from receiving a signal. But under a federal law, state and local governments cannot intentionally block communications. This law from 1934 was written decades before cell phones were even invented. The FCC says jamming could prevent someone outside of an institution from making an emergency phone call. But until then, Johnson will continue his fight to advocate for jamming. And that's my goal, to go anywhere I can to talk about it congressmen everywhere to tell them this should not be before someone else suffers like I've suffered. So that others can know they're safe on the outside. Tori Gessner, Carolina News.